Recently, we covered the unusual connections which have been made between the ancient Egyptian civilization and the Australian continent. The strange, yet not often discussed discoveries, such as that of Tutankhamun's vast boomerang collection, the vast and extremely controversial hieroglyphs discovered near Queensland, known as the Gosford Glyphs, locally known for centuries as the Woiwoi hieroglyphs, which clearly depict the burial ceremony of an Egyptian god, the cross-Pacific voyage undertaken, and a pyramid supposedly constructed upon the continent. There is, however, so much more. At Tin Can Bay, the chosen location of this once existing ancient Egyptian pyramid, for some reason, over the last century, a massive cover-up operation has ensued. The pyramid subsequently bulldozed onto a barge and the stone dumped off Fraser Island. The 10 to 12 men who were involved in this lengthy, destructive, and highly criminal task all signed secrecy agreements with the Australian government, agreeing to never tell anyone of their operation to rob Australians and the rest of the world of a truly historical understanding. Many people have researched this destroyed, controversial structure, and through extensive excavations and fact-finding exhibitions, have fortunately confirmed its past existence beyond any doubt. Although other ancient ruins have been found in the area, all have been extensively researched by individuals funded by organizations who would prefer that they arrive at certain conclusions. Thus, they may have largely been put down as being built in the last 200 years in many academic papers. However, many independent investigators have spent over 20 years attempting to decipher the pyramid's mysterious existence. The pyramid was noted as existing by the very first white explorers to the area. The aboriginal population had been aware of the structure for millennia. During numerous excavations of the Tin Can Bay area, several large stone statues were recovered. It is difficult to deny an attempted suppression of the pyramid's discovery when you are made aware of the fact that out of the five animal statues uncovered at the site, only one survives. Thanks to being buried within archives at the time of the other statues' disappearances, a creature not native to Australia, explaining the presence of ancient Egyptian-style mummification rites once practiced among the Torres Strait Islanders and Cape York Aboriginal tribes, as well as associated rites and beliefs, have also paralleled the same teachings of the religion of Osiris. Although many scholars, funded for many different conclusions, have all attempted to discredit the pyramid as a modern knockoff, this is in staunch rejection of the overwhelming and very real evidence in the form of cultural artifacts, which paint a very different picture of events, events which occurred within antiquity. You have to wonder why a story based entirely in fiction is passed off as the truth. One of our favorite set of artifacts defending a factual account of history have to be the scarab beetles, which, while certain authorities clearly attempt to keep the lid on Egyptian culture within Australia, cannot seem to get away from. These beautiful things just keep being unearthed, the first such artifact which managed to make it to popular attention before disappearing forever was a specimen made of chert dug up by a workman in 1976. The truth, it appears, is indeed out there. It is just a case of finding it. In 1879, British archaeologist Wayneman Dixon successfully retrieved a number of mysterious artifacts from within the infamous lower northern shaft of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. One of these artifacts was a small piece of a square wooden rod which has since disappeared. The only artifact to conveniently go missing, and the only artifact which could have produced an accurate dating for what seems was a rather elaborate prior attempt to overcome a sophisticated array of blocking stones and vertical passageways which confront all who try to breach the innermost sanctums of this mysterious pyramid. The reason for this past mission, or indeed who undertook such an attempt, remain a mystery, but their motive will soon become clear. One of Wayneman's other finds, resembling a small grappling hook with two rivets, matches two holes in a square rod still lodged up in the vertical northern shaft, clearly left by these wannabe tomb raiders. It seems that these highly talented acrobatic grave robbers couldn't make it any further, 
and once one becomes aware of the existence of a large hidden chamber built into the pyramid's design, placed just above this unexplored shaft, you will inevitably begin to wonder what could possibly be hiding up there. Indeed, it's a well-known fact that the builders of these structures were notorious for their superhuman efforts in concealment. Huge multi-ton blocking stones in front of the entrances to their kings and treasures, and indeed in front of virtually every interior shaft and room within the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The upper region of this northern shaft constitutes the last remaining unexplored areas due to the impossible access angle. We know it's there, and all we have to do is apply existing technology in getting in there, Rudolf Gattenbrink told the press. It must be noted, although the mention of tombs has been made, the evidence to suggest such is based solely upon a number of parchments and a single mark found within an interior chamber of the pyramid, naming a gang and the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu. Egyptologists have taken these fragmentary factors and concluded that all pyramids were therefore built as tombs, the Great One being built over a 10 to 20 year period, concluding around 2560 BC. It seems the entire thesis of ancient Egyptian legacy is built around a few mentions of the pyramids as tombs. No mummies or burial artifacts except a tiny box claimed to be that of the sarcophagus of Khufu has ever been found in the pyramids. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, Khufu's Egyptian civilization, along with all subsequent and prior dynasties, catalogued tremendous details regarding their existence, yet all, for some reason, seemingly forget to mention the construction of the biggest, most mysterious structures on Earth, or indeed, how they did it. What could there possibly be hidden within this chamber? This unexplored, and clearly sought after secret room, a room which is seemingly unrobbable. With mainstream Egyptologists, archaeologists and academic historians alike insisting that these amazing pyramids were once unquestionably tombs which were robbed completely over the millennia. Whatever this room contains may settle this once and for all. All over the earth, ancient structures can be found megaliths made of quarried stones many tons in weight. They are often found to have been perched atop one another with no mortar and seemingly little effort. Stonehenge, for example, underwent a restoration effort shortly after the Second World War, a project which consisted of several cranes, diggers, trucks, and lorries. One has to wonder, if one goes by currently accepted timelines, of course, just how did such primitive people manage to build these amazing, enormous structures? Structures such as the very ancient gateway in Tonka, still consisting of three 40-ton lumps of coral, the granite stones within the king's chamber at Khufu, weighing in at 80 tons, or the stone of the south at Baalbek in Lebanon, the largest officially recorded worked monolith on Earth, weighing in at a staggering 1,242 tons. There is, of course, other theories, and although to some, one in particular may not seem at all possible, it is far more of a viable option than currently attested archaeological views. Along with Stonehenge, another site we tend to unravel in the future, although a lot more modern, is Coral Castle, an oolite limestone structure that was built in Florida, and in particular, Edward Leedscallon, the man who built it. With the aid of a somewhat suspect black box, often spotted atop of his confusing array of multi-ton lifting wooden contraptions. This leads us on to our main topic of the video. It seems that Edward, like a few other known individuals throughout history, may have deciphered a piece of lost knowledge, information which allowed them to create rudimentary lifting devices with the ability of lifting stones many tons in weight effortlessly. In the small pockets of the world where advanced ancient cultures lived, prospered, and vanished into history. Places where their ancient ruins remain untouched by all but nature. Testimonies were found describing these exact technologies. Sites such as Puma Punka, Stonehenge, and in particular, Easter Island, where not only does there still exist accounts of the huge Moy statues, floated along the coast by way of strange chance, the places in which the priests hid within the caves also still exist. 
these rituals in apparent frequency. Could this be a form of lost knowledge? Or technology? Which was responsible for the building of the many unexplained sites found around the world. Vibrational technology, capable of making any inorganic object, regardless of size, weightless? This would have allowed craft, previously impossible of flight, to float across the heavens, vindicating many historical accounts of Viminas. Additionally, the levitation of physical objects by tapping into their atomic resonance is currently being redeveloped. The University of Bristol in England has created a handheld device with an array of speakers that can levitate light materials with sound alone. The more time that passes, and the more technologically advanced we become, the more we begin to understand these amazing ancient structures. And although, for some, the realizations that these technological epiphanies induce, for example, accepting the possibility of a past, highly advanced ancient civilization, which ended with an equally as possible global cataclysm, could be seen as altering of a worldview to understand what's true is far from detrimental.